My name is John. I've been shoeing horses for 30 years plus, mostly at the racetrack. Uh, in the last 10 years I've been on uh, outside of the racetrack doing uh, all sorts from dressage, jumping, eventing, cutting horses, pleasure horses, and backyard horses. And I have brought an old theory in the practice of having frog contact with the ground which is imperative to good health to the horse's foot and without good health you have no horse because you have no foot and I'm, I'm going to have a demonstration of pictures and I'll explain a little on each one to make my point so the very first picture that you're looking at right here is a horse that did not founder but has been let go too long obviously with the trim and the heels are way long the foot's contracted the blood flow has been cut off to the front of the foot and the arrows demonstrate where the foot's trying to adapt and be healthy but can't so next picture on this uh, diagram there's a demonstration on the top that shows blood flow on a healthy foot and it goes from its whole life. If the frog is making contact the whole life, the foot will stay healthy the whole life. And the bottom part of the diagram is showing from birth to six to eight year olds average is when the foot starts to deteriorate when the frog is not making good contact. And the latter years of life it's very difficult to bring the blood flow back once the blood flow has been constricted. Next slide. These pictures, all three of them show a disengaged foot, which means the blood flow has been restricted for because the frog has not been making contact. On the first big picture there, you'll see that the foot's contracting to try to support the weight as bearing on the heels without the frog helping and it's obvious that this foot's in trouble it can be brought back the top picture is it demonstrating what I've seen a lot of and most people would consider it an okay shoeing but you can see the frog is deteriorating already and obviously no contact with the ground and the bottom picture is an underslung foot that has uh, a quarter crack developing from rot for lack of circulation to the whole foot because the frog is not making contact and the heels are collapsing and this is not good next slide this slide demonstrates blood flow and good contact the horse hoof in the top left is a healthy hoof with good frog and the heels are in cooperation with the frog they're actually actually supporting each other and creating good blood flow and support and the picture of that foot is below it and at proper angles and it's a happy foot on the right side shows the veins in a foot and free blood flowing foot has healthy veins going all the way through it and when the, the flow is restricted, I don't have a picture of it, but it, the actual veins in the front part of the foot uh, shrinks and actually dies. On the bottom shows the digital cushion, which is like a sponge that fills up with blood and creates a shock absorbing effect when the horse hits the ground as the blood leaves the foot. So if that isn't making contact with the ground, it can't work like a shock that is broke and the rest of the horse has to take up the shock which is tremendous so you end up having suspensory problems flexor tendon problems ankle problems knee problems and shoulder problems and it goes through the whole horse and the little picture in the middle the yellow is the digital cushion which is like a sponge that i just said is full of blood and works like a shock and next slide this slide demonstrates balance and the, the a leg is, is a horse that is in balance with proper support underneath the whole leg. And you can see the line coming from the heel of the frog 
up through the horse and it's behind the cannon bone and behind the leg and produces a lot of support. The B leg, you can see I have two lines, one where it should be the heel and one where it is. So now that line is in front of the cannon bone and in front of the leg and the whole leg is not supported near as good as the leg A. And it may look good on the foot, but it's not. And it, this is the beginnings of too much pressure on the heels and they start to contract to help support the weight and or get under slung and produce uh, very unhealthy results to the whole horse's body. And the pictures on the right are a demonstration of well-balanced frog contacting feet, including the ones with shoes. But very healthy. Okay, next slide. All right, this slide uh, shows the same pictures we've seen. I just want it fresh in your mind so you can visualize when we talk about fixing these types of feet. So, next slide. Okay, this horse has two different kind of feet on the front of it. One is disengaged because the heels are real long and straight up and down and you could see on the top left how the frog is gnarly looking and, and not making any contact. And its other foot down below was underslung, frog making some slight contact but still not healthy and the bulbs of the heel are swollen a little bit and there's a crack in the frog and all this is related to lack of good blood flow and you can see on the right is the fix okay I took them down to where the frog and the heels are in cooperation with making contact to the ground supporting each other and the whole soul is making contact which produces good blood flow and these feet in time will look better and better as time goes on up to six months to a year these feet should come back to be quite normal and nice thick healthy frogs that are a lot wider than these are at this point next slide these two feet are the same two feet you just saw but fixed to a point to the best I could do at, at this time they're both at the same angles they both have frog contact and there's really difference in looks looking at it from the side and the front you have to actually pick up the foot to see how one is more contracted than the other but you can see that the desired angles are there uh, and these feet will get healthier and the cornet bands will actually not be swollen anymore in time as the foot releases and becomes healthier with more blood flow next slide this horse you're looking at the I'd say end result of eight shoeings, probably close to a year's worth of what I call management. Uh, the foot will never come back to be totally normal. As you can see in the bottom right corner, I have brought the foot back underneath the horse to the point where I'm on the other side of the white line. And and a normal horse there would be blood there and bleeding but this horse has no blood to its toe because of years of real high heel no frog contact and the foot became so disengaged it actually curled like a foundered foot and this foot has come back surprisingly well and the top left shows how wide the frog has become when in the beginning it was very small and very contracted and this is a cutting horse who had quit cutting because of its feet it was so uncomfortable and now is winning in competitions and very comfortable and the foot is quieted down and cold in the morning next slide all right these two pictures demonstrate what can be done in rehabilitating a foot and the one on the foot on the left is the one you just saw on the page before and the one on the right is is about what I had to deal with except it was worse but it's very manageable uh, depending on how bad it is you may be able to even go barefooted uh, but 
the foot wants to heal if we just give it a chance and uh, take proper care. Next. This is a demonstration of, of the kind of pressure and stress that the navicular bone takes uh, as a horse is being used. Uh, that line that comes around the back of the ankle into the navicular bone is, is the tendons. The, the flexor tendon is the lower one and it attaches to the navicular bone and when the horse has lack of blood in there in the wrong angles uh, you're pretty guaranteed to end up with a navicular problem in the future of your horse. I have never had a horse under my care get a navicular problem because of the blood flow and support the foot gives to the rest of the ankle and well the fetlock and ankle and, and upper leg. So the bottom right shows what most shoers will do if you have an avicular problem and, and what they're doing is providing support with the frog and the heels so they become uh, engaged. And my thing is why not prevent it and do that from the beginning of the horse's life. So next slide. This is the last slide and I'm demonstrating with doing half the foot on what to look for and what to do. The left side of the foot is to most people will look fine. They, they like to heal up about like that high. But if you notice it's not engaged with the frog, it's not supporting the frog or the frog helping to support the heel. The right side is the right way to do it and engage the whole foot including the sole and the wall, the heel and the frog all working as one where the other side is already becoming disengaged and will develop problems as time goes on. So I hope I've helped you and if you have any questions please call. I'm leaving phone numbers on the front and back of this demonstration and have a nice day.